I have a lot of drum and bass clients who will say, I don't want you to cut at 20 hertz because there's stuff going on at 20 hertz that I want in the track and it, and it gives that feel. So cutting everything at 20 hertz, you might think, yeah, that's a bit random. Why would you want to do that? There's nothing there. You can't hear it. Humans only hear from 20 hertz to 20K. What you find is that when you make a very low cut like that with mastering, you tend to make the compressors and everything work tighter. So even if you come up a little bit higher to about 30 hertz, then what happens is the compressors and things, they start just dealing a lot more with the main frequencies that are happening in the low mids and, and high mids. And then you're um, in a much better position to be able to then tweak that area, which is really important because that's the main place where your ears are picking up and where most of the instrumentation is happening. So to do a low cut at 20 hertz will help you there. Also, there are some frequencies that can happen below um, 20 hertz that really just aren't doing anything and are, you know, even when you're playing on a massive system, they're not helping at all. So you're better off getting rid of them totally rather than messing up the signal and throwing stuff out that you don't need. It will definitely just keep the song tighter. Now, if you're using in a mix situation, when you've got a kick or anything and you start cutting frequencies, if you cut 20 hertz off of that kick, you will get the kick sounding tighter. So that's really helpful when you're mixing, but mainly with mastering, you wanna do that all the time to there. Now, if I go back to originally when I first started learning mastering, and when I think about vinyl, if you listen to any vinyl from before 1995, then it all had a cut on it about 40 or 50 hertz, which is a lot higher than what we're talking about here. And the reason for that is because you wanted tight sounding, very mono, bass for vinyl because vinyl plays really well when it's got very in phase which which is basically mono signal in the low end and without these weird frequencies happening because if there's a frequency that comes in very low on a lathe it will pop the stylus out and it can blow the cutter head on a lathe and lathes have really expensive cutter heads so if you listen to any vinyl really far back you'll hear that they haven't got a lot of bass going on on them. I mean, if you listen to most things from the 1970s, even disco music, the, the low end's been totally cut out and you always think to yourself, oh, you know, there was a lot of bass going on, but there really wasn't. It was a lot of high bass rather than very subby low bass. I have a lot of drum and bass clients who will say, I don't want you to cut at 20 hertz because there's stuff going on at 20 hertz that I want in the track and it, and it gives that feel. But personally, that's absolutely rubbish because it depends on the angle of the cut that you're doing in the low end. So that 20 hertz filter, as long as you make sure that it's it, it's not kind of really curving, so like the dB of the shelf is not really curving. So you don't want it starting at say 100 and then, and then being a low curve to 20. So the point of where 20 is, is always going to say that's here. Say the curve is going over this point, then basically what you need to do is tighten up the curve so it's so it's more of a brick wall, but not a total brick wall because it does sound a little bit too harsh, but just so it's smoothed off, just so you're not touching any frequencies that are any higher than say 40, 50 hertz. Because the problem is you start losing low end of the kick then and then it's gonna be in all kinds of trouble. So you need to just keep it so it's just there as a safety net, get rid of the waffle. And that's why I, I mostly cut at around 20 hertz. Not all the time because sometimes it doesn't really need it, but I might sometimes put a safety net on at 10 hertz or 20 hertz, just so I know in, in the back of my mind, okay, that's better. And then what I'll do is I'll creep it up as I'm using compression and as I'm using EQ to hear how that's sounding when I do start creeping up. Because because sometimes you can get away with a higher cut of say 40 hertz and it sounds really nice in the mids, if, especially if it's a, like a guitar band where you want it really middly. But with a lot of dance music, we're all used to listening to a lot of sub and you want to leave it on there. So I wouldn't go much higher than 20 hertz. So yeah, that's why I cut 20 hertz. Let me know in the comments below what you cut at if you do mastering. If you do mixing, I'm really interested in that too. So uh, let me know in the comments and your experience with that. Please subscribe to this channel if you like these kind of tips. Let me know any questions that you have on mastering and I'll try and answer them on these videos. I'm here every day doing this kind of nonsense. So uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like this video. Go to my website, which is streaky.com where you can sign up for my Audio Anoraks newsletter. 
There is 25,000 other audio anoraks on there. It's a once a month email newsletter that goes out to these uh, anoraks, the same as me. And there are discounts, giveaways from manufacturers on there that give me those to give away. And also there are things that I've seen online that I'll point you to. Uh, so go to streaker.com, sign up to that. And thanks for watching, until next time, bye. Thank you.